lot of food goes stale or rotten when it's exposed to air or moisture. What happens if they stay in a vacuum chamber where it doesn't have either one? YouTube user Grant Feltz asked if food would get stale in a vacuum chamber. Grant, that is a great question and we would love to try that out. So today, we've got a variety of foods that go bad when they're left out. We've got some jars that we're gonna try and turn into small vacuum chambers with the food in them and see what happens to that food after a couple of weeks. Here's what we're going to try. We'll modify these jars so they can hold a vacuum with the food inside. We'll have some food in the vacuumed jars as well as keeping some food out of the jars as a control. After two weeks, we'll see what's happened. We've got five different foods that we're gonna test. Let's take a look at them. First, we have a couple of apples. We'll cut these into slices. One bunch of apple slices will go into a jar with all of the air sucked out. The other batch of apple slices will still go in a jar, but we'll leave the lid off. Hopefully we can keep too many fruit flies from finding it. We may end up putting a thin cloth barrier just to keep them out. We've got some milk with an expiration date of less than two weeks from now, and we're gonna put some of it in the jar in a vacuum and some of it just leaving it in the bottle and let it sit for two weeks and see what happens. Graham crackers are something that I think get very noticeably stale pretty quickly. If they're fresh, they break fairly easily, they're pretty crumbly, and they have a nice dry crunch to them. Normally, if you leave them out, they get really soft, almost mushy. You can't even really snap them, they almost bend. So we're gonna try some graham crackers in a jar and some graham crackers just sitting on a plate. Potato chips, famous for coming in bags full of air, will also go stale if you leave them out. Now, a lot of potato chip bags actually come full of nitrogen rather than normal air, and that's because the nitrogen doesn't react as much with the chips inside, and we're gonna give a comparison between storing chips with nothing, not even nitrogen, and just leaving the bag open. These aren't stale yet. Delicious. Lay's, that will be $1 million. Lay's. Lay's. Dang. And finally, we have some white bread. Bread, if you leave it out, you just gets really, really dry, at least in this climate. We're gonna see if the same thing happens in a vacuum chamber. We've got all our food laid out, so it's time to start making our vacuum jars. And we've done something similar to this before. We took some glass soda bottles, drilled a small hole in the cap, and had a piece of rubber that sat over that hole. We put the whole thing inside our larger vacuum chamber, and the air is able to get sucked out of the jar. When we put pressure back in, that rubber seal gets pressed up against the hole keeping it nice and closed. So that's what we're gonna try doing. We've got some of these larger jars so we can fit a good amount of food in it. We'll see how it works. Now we're using some electrical tape to hold this rubber in place. We're not trying to hold it down. We just want it to not go anywhere. So I'm not stretching the tape tight. I'm not pressing it down over the whole thing. We still want air to be able to escape out past this rubber and then have it get kind of sucked down on once there's low pressure in the jar. Let's give this a test. Beautiful. We let the air back into the main jar, but the rubber stopper prevented it from filling the little jar. Now I think if we peel this stopper away, we'll hear the air and watch the marshmallows collapse a little. Or a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say that's working pretty well. Wonderful. All right, we can fit whole graham crackers into this jar, so I'm just gonna throw a couple in there. whole slice of bread does not fit in, but I'll just cut it in half. And I think it'll be the best test is I'm just gonna put half of it into the jar and leave half of it in the other bottle. That way there is some air in the bottle. Get a good side by side.
Don't expect graham crackers are going to do a whole lot in a vacuum. That already has moisture in it. The, the sides of that have started fogging up and I'm pretty sure that is moisture leaving the bread. And all that moisture cleared up too. Ooh, it is boiling. The juice seems to be getting pulled right out of our apples. It's kind of hard to keep them in zero pressure and keep all the juice in place. So the results on the apples may be a little strange. I think in the spirit of making everything as equal as possible, trying to eliminate variables, we'll just store the non-vacuum versions in jars, but with the lids off. Why was it pressurized? Why are they all pressurized? With the apples, I am going to put a piece of paper towel over the top, maybe even try poking some holes in it. I want there to be good air exchange, but I also don't want to fill the house with fruit flies. Now we're going to set these aside for two weeks and see what has changed. The milk will be in the fridge, both of them. Everything else will just be sitting out. Time has now passed and in fact, more time than we originally planned. We were gonna go for two weeks and then we just got busy with our schedule filming other videos. So it's actually been four weeks that we've let these things sit out, which is plenty of time for stuff to go bad. Let's see how things are. We're gonna start by just popping all of the seals and we'll see it's possible that we haven't kept a perfect vacuum on all of these, but we'll see how much air seems to rush in as we break the seals on them. Side by side test. Graham cracker sitting open in a jar for about a month. Does have a little bit of snap left to it. Not much. And it definitely tastes like an old graham cracker. That's quite stale. I didn't really think of graham crackers as something that started tasting bad, but that was really not pleasant. Much more crumbly as it snaps, much crisper. And a lot more crunchy. You can actually hear that when I squish it. It makes like crunching sounds, and this one just kind of mushes. This one snaps apart into crumbs. So graham crackers worked really well. Now the bread, I already know I'm not gonna wanna do taste tests because there's mold on both of them. However, the mold on the open one, very minor. There's just a little bit growing around the edges. The biggest difference, of course, is that this is basically croutons. The bread in our vacuum chamber. While moldy and not really fit for consumption, is still completely squishy, like there has been no loss of any of the moisture. I'm not gonna eat it because of that. I'm also not gonna eat this one, and that's not because of the mold so much as it is because this is no longer bread fit for human consumption. And this smells bad. That's going back in the jar. Potato chips sitting open in a jar. They're so stale. Vacuum chamber chips. Tastes like just opened the bag. I don't know if I can really show the breakage is different with a stale chip. I mean, they both break, but that one is softer and tastes bad. That one is much crispier and tastes delicious. <laughs> apples, right away you can see that things have transpired with the apples. The ones in this container have obviously lost a lot of moisture. There is some mold forming. The 
peels have become all shriveled. The apple in general has just become shriveled. It's dehydrated a fair amount, and there is some mold growing on all parts of it. Obviously not something that we're gonna eat. Our vacuum chamber apples don't look like they've really lost much moisture. Maybe a little bit. We saw some of it even getting sucked out of the apple when we put it in the vacuum in the first place. The other biggest difference is that these have a lot more mold on them, and I think that's probably because they still have all of their moisture. The dried out apples don't get as moldy. The apples that just sit cut open but have a lot of moisture in them, mold central. Now we have milk. This jar has been sitting open in the refrigerator. You can see that the level of the milk has dropped. It's dehydrated that much. Whereas this one, I don't think that's changed. It's in the same spot that it was before. There's like lines on the walls, but that's from when I carried it to the fridge and it just swirls a little bit. So first test. That doesn't smell nearly as much as I thought it would. This is well expired milk at this point, And a lot of the time when milk goes bad, it smells terrible. You can smell it easily and from a distance. But this really doesn't have a smell. Unfortunately, I am not brave enough to try drinking that. You can see a little bit of stuff has formed on the surface. I don't know how to describe it better than that. I think that's probably some kind of mold. Maybe that's just the formation of the, the milk solids, how it happened to form up. All right. So this actually has more smell and it doesn't smell rotten, it just smells like milk. I'm gonna try mixing this up a little bit. All right, try and be brave here. It's not still good. Like it has a little bit of that buttermilk taste. If you've ever tasted buttermilk, it, it's maybe getting just a little bit sour. If you've ever just had milk that's gone bad, like you accidentally poured a cup of it or in your cereal, like it's disgusting and you want to spit it out and maybe go vomit right away. It doesn't taste like that, but I'm impressed at how well it preserved this one. That is about three weeks past expiration now. Grant Feltz, what you asked is if food will get stale in a vacuum chamber. And I think that we have demonstrated that in terms of just going stale, a vacuum does a really good job. Our graham crackers and our potato chips taste like they're completely new. They haven't gone bad at all and I think that this is a decent way to preserve them. I don't know that it's any better than just keeping them in a sealed Ziploc bag or something like that, but this did work. The bread did not go stale. It did keep that from happening, but it did not prevent it from rotting. This has mold all over it and is definitely not edible. Same thing with the apple. It didn't dry out, but it did go bad. It's moldy and you can't eat that. The milk, I think it probably preserved it somewhat. It didn't go bad as much as this one, which I admit I'm not willing to taste because yuck, but it's still not good. So keeping it from going stale, yes it does. Keeping it from going bad in all situations, no, it definitely does not. Grant, thank you for your great idea of something scientific we could try out using our vacuum chamber. If you check your YouTube inbox, we're gonna be sending you 25 bucks. And guys, remember, if you've got a good idea, let us know down in the comments. And if we use it to make a video, we will send you $25. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. That box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video. And you should go check that one out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you're not a subscriber, just hit this bomb to get in the club and that way you never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.